Hello, friends, and welcome to Theater Arlington's Theater Thursday. As always, I'm happy to have you guys here to be able to chat about things, uh, to be able to chat with you and talk about all of the stuff at Theater Arlington that's going on. Uh, we have a lot to talk about today. Uh, so some really exciting news, as promised. Um, and then, of course, we're going to be talking today uh, about the wonderful Miss Persis. Uh, but first, let me get through some uh, uh, some fun news. Um, and that is uh, to remind you all, first off, to uh, say hello in the comments. Let everyone know that you're here. Um, that helps us out a lot to uh, be able to chat with you that way. So say hi in the comments. Uh, say hi to me, say hi to each other. Um, please feel free to ask questions about anything that's going on. Uh, be sure and like and share us so that other people will be able to see this video. Uh, they will be able to reach more people. Hi, Callie. Hello, Kylie. Hi, Kim. Hello, family. Um, at first up, I want to tell you guys, because I promised that we were going to use today, and hi, neighbor. Hi, David Coffee. You're thinking the same as me. Hi, Becky and Diane. Beth Marshall, good to see you. Yes, it is very sad about Miss Persis. And hello, Jackie. It's always great to see you. Uh, I promised today that we would announce our season, and so I want to go ahead and do that. Um, uh, it is a super exciting season that I'm thrilled about and very happy about, uh, and I think you guys are going to like it as well. Hi, Micah. Um, so first off, let me do that really quickly, um, and then we'll kind of get into why I think a lot of us are here. Uh, so starting in January, you know, we're remodeling, right? So we're doing a big giant renovation project, um, and we are going to uh, start our new season in January. And so the first thing that we're going to be doing is uh, da -da -da, Sister Act. I don't know if you can see that. Sister Act. So that'll be our first show running January 14th through the 30th. Uh, super excited about that. Uh, we will follow that up with August Wilson's The Piano Lesson. Oh, oh there you go. The Piano Lesson. Um, we're going to have next up after that, that'll be uh, February 18th through March the 6th, The Piano Lesson. Uh, then we're going to have Goldie and the Three Bears, which uh, Don Powers and I wrote years ago. Uh, that will run April 1st through the 17th. It's a real cute uh, modern take on uh, Goldie and the Three Bears, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Uh, Mark, May the 13th through June the 6th. I'm really excited. Uh, we're going to be doing Cabaret. Um, and I will tell you all right now, I love that show. And uh, that show will be dedicated to Miss Persis. That is the first musical that I ever did in my entire life. Um, was Cabaret uh, that Miss Persis directed, and so that show will definitely be uh, in honor of her. Uh, following that, in uh, July 15th through the 31st, we're going to be doing a wonderful show, Black Comedy. Uh, it is hilarious, a great show by Peter Schaefer. Uh, you guys will really love that. It is super fun. Um, following that, August 19th through September the 4th, uh, we will be doing the second part of our Neil Simon trilogy and bringing you Biloxi Blues. Um, really happy about that as well. Our first one, uh, Brighton Beach, went so well, Brighton Beach Memoirs, and we're really excited to finally be able to come back and do the next part of the trilogy. Uh, after that, I'm very excited. I saw this play a couple years ago at Uptown Players, uh, September 30th through October 16th. We're going to be doing The Cake. It is a brilliant, poignant, wonderful comedy uh, starring Shannon McGran. Uh, I'm very happy about that. Uh, then in November, our youth production will be James and the Giant Peach. And we'll round out our season with Hooray for Holidays, a wonderful uh, Christmas presentation that we did um, two years ago. And we're bringing that back. Uh, for those of you that are interested in auditioning, I know many of you have probably heard we're doing a big five by five audition with all of the, uh, with several other Tarrant County theaters. Uh, those spaces are all filled up. Uh, we have 180 spaces. Those filled up within 24 hours. Uh, we're currently at about 275 people that are trying to sign up and get in. Um, 
super thrilled about all the performers and actors and people that want to get back to work. Um, we're really happy about that. Um, and just know that well, we will have some other auditions and opportunities and things coming up for all of you guys uh, that would like to perform. So know that. Uh, and now I want to talk about Miss Persis. Um, and I know a lot of you do too. Uh, for those of you uh, that are tuning in and just finding out or that don't know, Miss Persis made her transition on Tuesday. Uh, she's now in heaven. I assume she's up there with two really big tasks that she's got to handle. Uh, the first is opening, directing, and choreographing an Angel's Follies. And then I think the other thing she's probably trying to do is organize all the crap that Jerry Forrester has collected at all the Angel Antique and garage sales. So uh, my guess is that she is pretty busy up there already. Uh, I thought it would be nice today if we all had an opportunity to uh, share some Miss Persis stories, uh, or Miss Big P, as most of us called her. Uh, so please feel free to share your comments there in the uh, and stories about her in the comments. Uh, we'll all be able to read those. Uh, Persis Ann and Kim and the family and all of us will be able to go back and find this on Facebook later and read all of the fun stories. So uh, uh, please share away. Um, I'll read some of those out loud as we get to them uh, and share them with everybody. Um, I want to share some photos uh, as well as uh, some thoughts. Uh, so let's do that. First, we are here, uh, like I said, to celebrate <laughs> Miss Persis and her life and her legacy. Um, I thought it was appropriate that we do it on our program today because uh, some of you may not know, but Persis was one of the founders of Theater Arlington. Uh, she and Shirley Orr and Charlotte Owens founded the Potluck Players, which became Arlington Community Theater, which became Theater Arlington. And she hosted the first performances at the Miss Persis Studio of Dance. So uh, she also choreographed and even directed many of the early Theater Arlington musicals. Uh, she was a huge part of Theater Arlington's foundation and a huge legacy for us. Um, I think everyone would agree that Miss Persis is a true Arlington icon. Uh, she is a legend. I think there are probably very few people that are as well known as she is in Arlington. So I would say she's probably our most uh, favorite person, right? Our most, our most famous and most favorite. Uh, she owned and operated the Miss Persia Studio of Dance for 67 years. And uh, I've been reading a lot of people's comments on Facebook about her, and I think everyone would agree that she not only taught tens of thousands of children tap, ballet, jazz, and musical theater, but each one of those children, each one also got lessons in manners and social graces and treating re people respectfully and using good diction and pronouncing words correctly and so many life skills. Kathy Taylor, yes, she says, I can still hear her say, cover up or go by and say hello to the parents when you're at a party. It's true. I, I remember going by the studio when it was uh, in its first location um, and all of those little girls making sure that they put on a cover up before they went out to their cars. <laughs> Uh, countless numbers of Arlington sixth graders have taken cotillion classes from Miss Persis, where they learn, again, social dances and social manners. Uh, somehow, though, running her own business, she also found time to perform for many years at Casa Manana and theaters all over the Metroplex. Um, and not only did she have a hand in starting Theater Arlington in the early 70s, but in the 80s, she formed Gowntown Theater, which was a joint effort between the community and UTA to have a huge summer musical. Um, I think I've got a photo of one of those. Um, so there were tons of them, but Annie uh, was my favorite because that was the time that I got to perform on stage with Miss Persis for the first time. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but uh, here's Miss Persis over here in the corner as Mrs. Hannigan. Um, and there's me. <laughs> uh, I remember it was quite joyful and quite fun uh, watching her sing Little Girls. 
uh, each night uh, was really great. Um, in addition to all of those things, uh, Ms. Persos was also an adjunct professor at UTA for many years, and that's where I first met her. Uh, she was my professor for a children's theater class that I took my first semester at UTA. Uh, that's also where I first met Kim Forrester, um, who used to tell me that I needed to share my lunch with her because her mom was the teacher and I would fail if I didn't give her part of my sandwich. Um, Persis was also my first director outside of high school, um, as I said, in my first musical ever in Cabaret. I will say during that first semester, she really took me under her wing and began a 40-year 40 40 relationship in which she taught me, mentored me, loved me, built up my confidence, convinced me that I could do things that I didn't think I could do, uh, trained me to do them, and told me when I was doing them wrong, and praised me every time that she could. Uh, Ms. Persis has been a huge supporter and cheerleader for me. She gave me opportunities to perform all over town at all kinds of venues at every size that you can possibly imagine. Um, and there were an unimaginable amount of times that we went out in the community and performed places. Uh, here's a time that we did a uh, kickoff for the Red Cross, I believe it was, um, uh, for their annual campaign. Uh, and we thought we were going somewhere and doing it for about 50 people, and there ended up being about 500, and it was televised. Um, we, we had wished after we found out that it was televised that we'd rehearsed a little bit more. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, she gave me my first paid teaching job as her teaching assistant, uh, teaching ballroom dance classes, uh, when I had no idea how to do any ballroom dancing, uh, but she said she would show me the steps and uh, to come to the studio a little bit early and she would teach me everything I needed to know. And so I got to the studio early and uh, waited around for her to finish a class. And then she finished class and she was like, oh, I need to change clothes. And she went and changed clothes. And I was like, okay, well, it's getting close to the time we got to teach. I hope, I hope she will go over what we're gonna do really fast. And she was like, oh, let me get some music together. And she got the music together. Um, and then we were supposed to get in the car and go to a country club to teach this class of adults uh, ballroom dancing. And she was like, oh, yeah, today we're going to go over the foxtrot. Uh, here's how you do it. You go side together, side close, side together, side close, walk, two, three, four. All right, you got that. Uh, we're also going to teach the cha-cha. That's forward on your left, back on your right, one, two, three. Back on your right, forward on your left, one, two, three. All right, let's get in the car. We're going to be late. I was like, oh, my gosh. Uh, that was my uh, first lesson that took all of about a minute. Um, and it ended up being fine because it really didn't matter if I knew the steps or not, uh, because she would always lead while we were dancing. And uh, she was a very strong and very good leader. And so it was impossible for me to mess up. Uh, after a while, she did end up training me well enough that I could lead when the two of us would dance. And I will tell you when she finally let me start leading that, uh, that was a great honor. Uh, Persis was my choreographer and my director for many shows at Theater Arlington, and she taught me more about directing and creating stage pictures and telling a story that is truthful and the best ways to work with actors and to get the best out of them. Uh, she has been a huge influence on my theater life and my teaching life. Uh, I often, and I know the lots of you that are teachers out there, uh, we'll find the same thing, uh, that we found ourselves saying many things to our students that Ms. Persis said to us. Uh, I can remember numerous times taking off my glasses and saying, now let me tell you something, my young friend, and lecturing my students in the way that we got lectured. I will be forever grateful for the positive, powerful influence that she had on my life. And I know that there are literally thousands of kids out there and adults out there who feel the same way. Persis Forrester changed lives. She made them better. And we are all better for having her in our lives. She's gonna be missed, but never ever forgotten. Hi, Misty. 
Uh, Misty says one of the things she's most uh, appreciative of is her to ability to create so many opportunities for us to perform. It's true. In the studio, 4th of July, recitals, nursing homes, and many others. I can't imagine organizing as many things as she did all those years. Such great learning and part of why I'm confident in front of a group today. I love going to dance conventions with her. She kept us all in line and it was a bit like a slumber party with a teacher that I idolized. Loved her, still love her. Oh, Misty, it's so true. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, she did, she created countless of opportunities for all of us and made it possible for us to stand in front of groups and have the jobs that we have now um, all the time. I think scaring us a little bit and loving us a whole lot uh, and making us all happy. Um, Elizabeth Thompson, yes, says she taught her granddad ballroom dancing. Uh, yes, Amanda Davidson, her lessons, how to use a hanger, how to fill an ice cube tray. Uh, because, because, not because. Yes. We love you, Mrs. Hannigan. David Coffey, yes, says we did a couple of benefit shoestring singer shows at Town North Studio in addition to a production of I Do, I Do with Bill Cole to raise funds for Theater Arlington. Tom Jones and Harvey Schmidt gave us the right to do the show in the studio. That's right. That's how this theater got started is by Miss Persis raising funds to make that happen. Um, yes, Callie, I think that's still true. Callie Cunningham says when she started uh, being an assistant at 15 years old, Miss Persis would say, you can't be a dance teacher until you learn how to work a record player. Yes, and I'm, they still use a record player, I believe. So, um, Angela Polk, I know, Angela says, learning how to keep her elbows off the table. I still think about that. I still feel, I mean, that's, my mother yelled at me about that as well. Uh, but I still think about Miss Persis telling us to do that and how to behave out in public. So, um, Terry, Terry Burris says, my family started with Miss Persis when she was located above the Fluffy Ruffle shop in downtown Arlington. She taught her brother and myself and two kids through all the decades. Uh, we'll miss her matter of fact ways. Yes, her high energy. Love to all of those who can call her teacher. Yes. Uh, Ashley Zicky, you know I'm not slouching. I'm sitting up in this chair uh, as best as to my ability. Yes. <laughs> Greg Bateson, yes. I think we all uh, have visuals of Miss Persis wiping off those records uh, on her hip or on her backside. So, yes. Hello, Persis Ann. Uh, I'm so glad you're here. I'm glad you get to see all of this and hear all of these that we're sharing. Uh, Persis Ann, know that we all love you very much. Um, love you and love your mama. Love Kim. Your whole family um, have been inspirational and so important to all of our lives. So I'm glad you're here and getting to share with us. Um, trying to see who all else is here. Um, Yes, uh, Jack Hardaway took a stage movement class when a theater student at UTA. I did too. Now, I'll tell you that was very, very funny as Miss Persis would teach these stage movement classes and teach us all how to walk and how to do things. Um, and uh, I can remember many times her telling us, no, no, you got to you got to butch it up, butch it up when you're walking across the stage. You got to be a man. Let's go. Uh, and all of us kind of being like, oh, we're trying. This is this is as good as it gets, Persis, sorry. Um, yes, my sister was a follow spot operator um, and said she was a great follow spot lesson because Miss Persis would zip around that stage so quick, you never really sure where she was going to be. Melissa Martin, Little Girls is always going to be her theme song. I agree, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm not missing anybody. Y'all keep the memories coming because I like it. Elizabeth Thompson, say it with a smile on your face and a smile in your voice. So true. So very true. Um, I would like to tell you all, um, 
I know that you know that the theater is uh, doing renovations right now. And one of the things that we are excited about is that we're going to have a new classroom uh, in our theater space. Um, and we decided months ago as we were looking at things and, you know, we're going to name all parts of the building, all different things. And we're raising money right now to uh, have people name different parts of the theater, uh, the cabaret stage, the box office, all different things. Uh, after different folks in in the community. Um, and we decided we we're going to form some teams to name some of the classrooms and the dressing rooms, uh, the scene shop, uh, to hopefully name them after people uh, who were influential in the theater. And so uh, we thought we would have a team, Shirley, for Shirley Orr, who is one of the founders, uh, team George Lopez Aguada for our uh, scene shop and our set builder for many, many years. Uh, and we wanted to name one of the classrooms after Miss Persis. And uh, I checked with Persis Ann to make sure that this would be okay. Um, and we are going to try and raise uh, funds to do that, to name um, the classroom after Miss Persis. So uh, we're going to be ca uh, calling that Team Persis uh, as we do some fundraising for that effort. Um, Kim, I think we've, we've got a place to make donations. So we're trying to raise $10,000 to do that. Um, and Kim's going to put a, a link in there, I think, for uh, for that. And I will tell you that I personally decided uh, today I'm going to start that off by uh, making a pledge to donate a thousand dollars to that. Um, and uh, that's just... for me to honor all that she has done in my life, and I will uh, get great pleasure out of seeing. Uh, her name on that classroom. She was just my best and greatest teacher ever. Um, and uh, I think that she deserves to have a classroom named after her. So uh, we're going to raise those funds and make that happen. Um, oh, I, yes, Denise Holloway says, no video cameras during the recital. You are here to watch the show. Yes, <laughs> agreed. Um, Pam, yes, we do have a Venmo. I don't know what it is. Um, they did put in the chat there uh, how you can get to a link to donate to Ms. Persis. You can also go to our website. Um, Dan Rash, how are you, sir? I remember you from Arlington High. Um, Persis was a beloved friend to the many choral directors in Arlington. She willingly gave up her time to enhance our performances. She was such a blessing to the ISD and the community. Sending love from South Carolina. Thank you, Dan Rash. Um, yeah, she was a huge part of all of the schools. I know when I first started teaching, um, aside from having that influence of her as a teacher and her making me a good teacher, uh, numerous times that I call her with questions. Uh, my first several years, she came and Persis Ann came uh, anytime that I needed them to help choreograph or direct things. Um, Yes, the, the Arlington Independent School District uh, owes her a debt of gratitude as well, not just her own studio, but she reached out and really worked with those kids. And of course, the IM program uh, that they established and went into schools, and especially the Title I schools uh, that didn't have a program uh, to help teach uh, kids uh, music and support, she went in and made sure that that happened. Uh, Kara Shellhammer, good to see you. She says, uh, my grandmother took me to my first class at age six. She was a big fan herself. And in fact, she was front row and center for the 80 plus tap class and just got the thrill of performing at any age. So very true, yes. <laughs> um, I'll keep those stories coming because I know they are uh, heartfelt. Um, Thousands of children have benefited from P, but also so have their parents. That is very true. It's very true. Um, you know, I know uh, I was talking to uh, Penny Patrick today, and uh, she was talking about how much she adores Miss Persis and how much she'll be missed, uh, talking about taking her daughter Melissa uh, to class. And that, you know, if Melissa didn't come in that door, and greet Miss Aurora and greet Miss Persis and say hello and do the things that she would. 
uh, that Miss Persis would send her right back out the door and tell her to come in and do it again. Um, and that's one of the things I always loved about Miss Persis. It does not matter if the parent was standing right there, if the parent corrected them or not, Miss Persis was going to correct them uh, and make sure that they were handling their business correctly uh, and being a proper lady or gentleman and doing what they should. So, uh, Beth Whipker, hello, my darling. It's good to see you. She's so very often when I auditioned for a part at theaters, I was almost always asked if I was a Miss Persis kid. And then I usually got a part. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Um, yes, Misty Chateau, that is so true. She says, Persis was so good, the best she's ever seen at communicating expectations. Uh, that is one thing that they, you know, really talked to us and was on all of our teaching um, uh, evaluations is did we set our expectations well? And I will tell you, that was one thing that I knew how to do from watching Miss Persis. She always told you at the beginning of class, at the, when you met her at any point in time, what her expectations were. And then she made sure that she corrected you and that you rose to those expectations and that all of that happened. Um, so, yes, I, I agree, Misty. She was great at that. Um, Jordan Jarzavsky says, Miss Persis, musical theater classes taught me how to introduce myself with confidence. Hello, hello, hello. I can still her, hear her vocal warm ups. We learn to take criticism with grace and learn from our mistakes. Uh, isn't that the truth? I mean, don't you wish that most people in the world could do that now? You see all this infighting and all these problems on Facebook. I'm telling you, if these people had had a class with Miss Persis, they would know how to handle a little bit of criticism uh, with grace and dignity. Uh, they would learn some compromise and learn how to do things. Kelly Jokel says, my dad loves the story that during a musical theater's visitor day, she asked all of us kids to sit up straight and the parents all instantly sat up straight. <laughs> yes, I can remember that. Um, Sandra says, so many children learn to stand tall in front of their peers and proudly say, my name is, and I am in the blank grade and Exactly. Exactly. People could introduce, you know, we think that's not a skill that people need to learn, but it is. And no one did it better than Miss Persis teaching them. Yeah, traditional instruction in its true form. So true. Misty, I love you as well. And yes, let's get together soon and share Miss Persis stories. Um, I would love that. Um, Thank you for dropping in. I know you've got to get back to work. Thank you. Callie says she told the moms once that they were preparing lunch for a long rehearsal and only farmers and field hands eat a whole sandwich. We still cut all of our sandwiches in half. <laughs> Very true. And I can remember many times uh, when we, when Persis Ann and I were going to go get something to eat, we would say, Miss Persis, would you like to go with us? She'd be like, oh, no, no, I don't want to bother you. I don't want to, I don't want to butt in. And we're like, you're more than welcome. And just, no, I'm just going to stay here. I'll just go sit down in the back and have a peanut butter fold over. <laughs> like, okay. That's right. Yeah, Jackie says uh, that I, we do that in our ACT UPS program here at Theater Arlington. Uh, because of Miss Persis. My name is and being able to introduce yourself. So it's true. Uh, you know, uh, all of us that ever took a class from Miss Persis and then ever went and talked. <laughs> yes, Persis said, cold bowl of cereal. I'll just have a cold bowl of cereal. It's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Stand up straight, hands to your side. Pronunciate Persis after me. Yes, spend all of your Saturday mornings there, yes. Yes, and I can remember uh, Miss Persis and the handbags performing. Uh, I can remember so many basement parties. I hope all of y'all got to go to basement parties after a show. Um, all those elf shows. I mean, really, you know, all over town, there are hundreds and hundreds of very sad elves this week. Not our normal smart elves and dumb elves, but all very sad elves. Um, and I think all of those elves 
are lucky that they got to grow up and do that same show and progress to being smart and uh, dumb and reindeers and Santas um, and get to do that show and the joy that it brought to so many people all over town, especially going to so many nursing homes. And I used to say all the time, why do you do that? Oh my gosh, you guys slow down. You don't have to go so much and do so many shows. But I think it was so valuable to all of those kids to get to perform that many times and so valuable really to all of those folks in a nursing home uh, to get to see the young people and to get to have that joy uh, and so many times that uh, she went and, and spread that kind of love to people. Um, an amazing legacy aside from all the work she just did with all of us. <laughs> yes, Becca Brown, that old Coke machine um basement parties and elf shows were the best yes persis and the nerds <laughs> well, interrupted many a elf show james healy yes took a chance on you for cabaret as a college freshman many years of friendship after that uh, i remember you did a great job in that show elizabeth thompson says elf shows are what got me interested in music and the brain and she got to sing at nursing homes and see the impact that it made. And that's something that now she re researches for her job. Um, it also, you know, I think I think taking all those kids to nursing homes uh, was also fantastic for those kids because as their grandparents and people became elderly, they weren't afraid of going into a nursing home or visiting their elderly relatives in hospitals. They knew still you just go up and shake their hand and say hello and love on them um, and that they are still valuable. Uh, I think the, the lessons there, aside from singing and dancing once again, uh, to work uh, with young people and old people together was a huge gift to everyone. Shelly Greenwell says, I have so many great memories of Persis Forrester from TATD and Tap It Up. She always commanded the room. Ain't it the truth? Always commanded the room. She's done so much for dance through all of those organizations. The cow number was one of her favorites that the teachers at TATD did. Uh, Sherry Thaxton, yes, remembers choreography still from the early 80s. Yes, for real, for sure. Hey, uh, speaking of uh, some of those things, uh, I got to show some folks from all of these uh, uh, different crazy things that we did. You know, we love Miss Jackie, the best of friends. I loved watching the two of them interact and together, um, how much fun they were together. <laughs> I love when she would MC those elf shows. There's nothing that could go wrong that Miss Persis couldn't handle uh, with a clever ad lib um, or a quick get in your place <laughs> or fixing things. Uh, now, I'm very sad because I'm not sure what this photo is from. Somebody please tell me uh, that might be the senior follies um, over that she did uh, in Dallas. But oh, my gosh, I love that photo so much. Um, great photo here with Persis Ann and Dawn. A wonderful uh, vacation photo with the, her lovely daughter, Kim. This just sums up so many things to me. I love the expression on her face there, uh, about to be uh, laughing and carrying on. Another good vacation photo with Kim. A great photo there with Jackie. Entertaining all of us <laughs> there with musical accompaniment by Don Powers. Uh, this was uh, right when I first started uh, as executive producer here at Theater Arlington uh, and a show um, that might be Hello Dolly. I'm not sure that uh, the wonderful Jane Robin Ellis and Miss Persis came to. Uh, I can't tell you all how much this photo means to me, having these two uh, legends, these two wonderful ladies who were so influential in my life there. And then I just love this photo as well. 
her stance, her facial expression. Uh, and I think I'm always going to remember her with a mic in her hands, right? James Healy remembers tap dancing with bottle caps stapled to their sneakers <laughs> and remembers how Warren, Jeff, and Robert uh, did that in a dance class at UTA one time and how much she loved it. Yes, Deborah Gideon Witherspoon says she certainly had her challenge sometimes teaching some of the football players at Lamar. Oh, it's true. I know she choreographed shows there for years and years, and it was not always easy. Uh, yes, Jackie. Uh, she put you as Annie in Annie for Showstoppers of Broadway. Um, I will tell you all a quick, funny Showstoppers of Broadway show. Uh, my sister was actually running the spotlight for that. She had gone to UTA. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Persis was uh, an adjunct professor there, and she had put together this fantastic musical of all these different musical productions, um, great numbers from shows that had been on Broadway. Um, and uh, they did huge sections of all these different shows. I think the show was like three hours long. Maybe it wasn't, but that's what I remember. Um, and I was still in high school and I went because my sister was running the spotlight. And I, at that time, did, re did not really know who Persis was. I had heard that she had had a dance studio, but that was kind of really the only thing that I knew about her. I did not know she was an icon and a legend. And um, I went to see the show. And she was the narrator, and she sat on this director's chair over to the side and would introduce all the acts. Um, and she kept talking about how um, she had seen this show in New York and how great it was and why she wanted to do each one. And I kept thinking, what? why is she telling us about when she saw the show in New York? Why does she keep giving us this information? Do Because, uh, again, I didn't know who she was. And I was like, do people care about her experience while she went there? Well, of course, I found out, yes, people did care. <laughs> uh, they were fascinated by her experiences. Uh, and it was fun to hear her tales, uh, as well as getting to see all these great numbers. Um, so, uh, yes, that was my first encounter with her. Uh, and then was thrilled once I got to school and got to actually work with her. Yes, Angela says she misses those elf days. Um, uh, Kara, yes. Uh, my grandma did the cow number two, and she still cracks me up watching that show, watching your grandmother and sing and dance as a cow. You'll never forget that. It's true. That The cow number is still one of my favorites. Kathy Taylor says she was the oldest orphan, and didn't we all have fun in the green room? Yes, we did. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> my sister says, hey, she remembers, uh, you know, we all got to save the plasticware at the basement parties. <laughs> I definitely remember that. I, I accidentally threw a plastic fork away one time. I didn't hear the end of it for years. Um, Stacy Bratton says um, she's uh, repeated sucking your gut to her kids many, many times and then repeating the Miss Persis stories. <laughs> yes, it's me, the oldest living dance teacher in captivity. <laughs> yes, thank you, Melissa. Yes, I can remember Miss Persis saying that numerous times as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amanda Davidson says she remembers being on stage during a dress rehearsal at Texas Hall and Big P wasn't supposed to be there um, and for a show and uh, she was supposed to be at a show in Oklahoma um, but Amanda wasn't in her right place and over the God mic she heard her say Amanda scoot over <laughs> And she was so startled. She was like, how does she know? But, oh, she always knew. And I think the uh, great thing is she will always still know. So uh, I still expect that I will get notes from her after shows that I direct and after things that I'm in. I still know that I'm going to hear her voice uh, critiquing me and telling me the things that I've done wrong and that I need to fix. Uh, I think she'll still be correcting my stage pictures on stage as I do them. I know she'll be on my shoulder telling me, Hey, this could look better, fix this. Uh, and I know that when it's all said and done, that she'll be there to tell me all the things that I've done correctly as well. Yes, James, uh, she told us all that. I know she says, you know, 
smile. Doesn't matter what you're doing on stage. Doesn't matter if you do the steps right or not. Now, she wanted us to do the steps right. But it didn't matter if we did the steps right if we smiled because no one's going to look at your feet. They're going to look at your smile. I think that's one of the best things she ever taught me and that I tried to teach all of my students, yes. Um, <laughs> Allison says, I still have an amazing turnout, right? Uh, and Beth saying, still got the best posture. Can't sit back in a chair. I know you can still, I don't know if y'all can tell, there's, there's space in my chair. I am I'm sitting up. <laughs> Uh, Denise Holloway is thankful to PA and to Persis for taking time out for a surprise performance of her teacher program. Yeah, I would say, you know, I think all of us have gone and done spontaneous shows for the two of them, but it was mutual. If you ever needed Persis or Persis Ann and you said, hey, show up at this day at this time, I need you to do something, they showed up, right? Miss Persis has always been there for all of us as well. So. Um, I want to thank everybody for uh, being here today, for sharing things, uh, for sharing these stories. Um, I know that uh, in time, uh, when they're ready, uh, Persis Ann and Kim and the family uh, will have a get together that we can all go to. I know there'll be a, a big, beautiful Catholic mass that we can go to um, and pay our respects. Um, I know that there will be a time where we can get together uh, in person and tell some great stories and uh, hug each other and laugh and show each other all of our good posture and uh, share of all of our funny uh, Miss Persis quotes. Um, Suzanne Ashlock, yes, I remember you from MAME and from many shows with Miss Persis. Uh, yes, I think we're all the performers we are today because of her and all the things that she, all the things that she taught us. Um, uh, there's shows I think that uh, and memories that we're all going to remember uh, I will never forget MAME uh, which is one of again one of the first shows that I did with her at Gowntown um, and her making all of those quick changes uh, her yelling uh, to get the fox where's the fox? the fox? I need the fox for the big number um, opening night her uh, uh, breaking her ankle uh, during the big main number um, and getting up and continuing uh, with the show and finishing that show out, that performance, um, limping a little bit, uh, but the audience never really knew that she was uh, broken and uh, in such pain because uh, she was a trooper and she made sure to get through that show. Um, If you've got some more comments, I'll give it just a, another minute or two and we'll kind of wrap things up. Um, if you guys have some other things that you would like to share or say, um, again, I know Persis Ann is here watching with us. Uh, I know that if you guys want to say anything to her or to any of the folks, please uh, go ahead and uh, put those things in the comments. Allison, you were in Maine. Oh, yeah, she did. She broke. This was Maine at Gowntown Theater, and she uh, broke that ankle that first weekend or sprained it at least. I know. Um, I mean, I don't I don't remember canceling any shows. We might not have done the next two that weekend, but I know we went back and did the other ones. Um, uh, lots of lots of great folks in that show. So um, I had one little. Uh, one little song before we go. Um, this, uh, Persis loved, loved to rewrite a song, right? Um, and one of her favorites that we all know the words to and can all sing along to. Um, time for us to uh, change this one up a little bit. Bye, neighbor. Bye, neighbor. It's time to go, so what can we say? Bye, neighbor, bye, neighbor. Oh, how we wish you could stay. You taught us to shake hands and let a smile do the rest. Of all the teachers in town, we know that you were the best. I'm crying, bye, neighbor. 
Thy neighbor, time for us to say bye. We'll say goodbye for now, Miss Persis. We love you so much. We know that you will be with us forever. You are in our hearts. You are in our every cell. And we will carry on your legacy. Thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you for all that you did for Arlington. You are a treasure. You are an icon. Persis Ann, Kim, Steve and Toby, we love you. We are here for you when you need us. Take care. Everyone, thank you for being here. This has been very, very special. Thank you.